Duncan McLeod here from Tech Central. I'm joined now by Konstant Falschenk. He's the uh, supervisor at the newly constructed WITS Anglo-American Digital Dome at WITS University. Konstant, welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the work that's gone over here, gone on here in the last little while and how long it's taken to construct this new facility. Uh, thank you, Duncan. Um, it's been, uh, been quite a while. Um, it's been two years of construction. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're on the new phase of the building. And um, as we can see, the old planetarium behind us, which is a heritage building. Mm -hmm. um, so we couldn't attach this building to that one. Um, that's the walkway that we came through. Uh, but um, importantly is that this will be our offices, a uh, place where people can actually come and sit and overlook, like you can see Bramfontein at the back and the highway here in front of us. And um, so basically then the dome itself is then the masterpiece, the total um, digital yeah. system that's been installed. Now this was originally built as the planetarium, the Johannesburg planetarium, um, probably what, 60 or 70 years ago now? <laughs> yes, um, so I don't think people will easily forget the name planetarium. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be stuck um, for the most, most of the time, but we will need to get used to the digital dome. And um, that is a progress. Uh, from the analog to the new digital. So, so tell us about what you had here before. Um, I believe it was a Zeiss-based uh, system and what you've replaced it with. Right, so the Zeiss star projector that we had um, originates from 1930 from the Hamburg Planetarium in Germany. Um, and when Johannesburg decided they would like a planetarium for their 70th birthday, Zeiss couldn't manufacture a new star projector within one year. That was the time scale. And um, what happened then is uh, Zeiss started looking for a projector in Europe and eventually Hamburg gave their star projector to us on condition that they will get a new star projector from Zeiss. Right, so um, they got a new one and um, the old star projector was then upgraded uh, to um, a new star projector for that time. So it was an original um, star Mark II star projector. And um, just to give you the sense of it, um, last year we actually celebrated the 100th year of analog star projectors, uh, or optical mechanical star projectors. Uh, so the thir first one being um, Mark I in 1923, um, the one that we had was from 1927, and that was uh, planned. And then it was upgraded to a Mark III when it came to Johannesburg in 1960. Mm -hmm. so, so from 1960 until two years ago, that was the main instrument that we used. Um, obviously, we could only do stars. Um, and from there, we moved on to the digital. Mm -hmm. um, the new system you've put in now? The new system that we've put in. Um, Quality-wise, um, digital will not get to an analog um, system. Mm -hmm. um, it just gives you a much, much broader, um, better star quality. Okay, But you can do so much more with a digital system. Like what? Right, so with the digital system, um, if I compare it to, to the analog system that we had, and up to, to what we uh, went with is we still used 35 millimeter slide film wow. to do our shows, All right, so people I can remember that. And um, now it was static, All right? Um, you could have moved the stars and moved the planets, but it was static. Mm -hmm. With a new digital system, is we can now go from the Earth, we can fly to the planets. We can actually see, go to the International Space Station, go into the space station um, and go fly through it, which we couldn't do with the other technology. Right, so the system is built in with quite a lot of different catalogs, star catalogs, um, not just star catalogs, but as we heard um, from the VC, also, we can start using it for other things mm -hmm. as well. So there's modules built in 
into the system for mathematics, for arts, for math, uh, for medical. So we can just we don't just have now look at the picture of a heart. We can actually now go into the heart mm -hmm. um, or arteries, see the artery systems um, that can be done. Now also what can happen is the researchers can bring in their content into the dome. Um, typically through a Python script or something like that, oh, yeah. um, bring it into the dome and then visualize that. Um, then so it could be used for lectures as well, potentially. Oh, oh yes, mm -hmm. oh yes. Um, so that is the. That's why we chose this system, um, where we used to have circular seating. Right now we've got the right seating, so you can use the venue now for uh, lectures in the front. Um, I can even control the system from the front. Tell, tell, tell me a bit about, about the projectors then. I had a look at them inside. They're very large digital yes. projectors. Uh, how many of them are there and what sort of resolution are they capable of projecting onto the roof of the dome? All right. So the projectors are Sony 4K projectors with specialized lensing. Mm -hmm. And um, there's 10 of them in there. So they produce all together, we get an 8.6K uh, resolution. Uh, in the dome. To make an eight, um, 8K clip, a minimum ren rendering is about 30 minutes per frame. Wow. So, um, so your rendering is, is huge yeah. uh, that you need for, for something like that. And, and how much content is available uh, to project here? Is it readily available? Can you download it off the internet? Do you have to purchase it from specialized sources? Um, yeah, the, the content is you normally will have to buy from uh, from a vendor, mm -hmm. and um, that is expensive uh, because it depends on the licensing of the vendor. So you either you can either buy a perpetual license, or you pay per seat or per showing. So it all depends on the the creator, the content creator, all right? Um, but it's normally you're looking in a region of about uh, five thousand euros uh, per show. Um, which is expensive. That's very hundred thousand rand a show. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So so that is a that is expensive. Um, but when you look into the cost of how much it costs to produce such a show, um, you know, then then you can I won't say justify it, but um, that's the big the big issue. Yeah. Um, is the cost going into rendering those shows. Now I believe this is open to the public. Uh, when, when are the first show, uh, open shows going to happen and um, what do the public need to know? Do they need to book in advance? There will be a booking system. Um, we will go through web tickets mm -hmm. and uh, public we will start uh, for public and schools we will start in February next year. Okay, okay. And you, you've always had a lot of school groups coming through to look at, look at this when it was the planetarium. Um, you'll continue with that with this, uh, with this venture, will you? Okay, that's, yeah. that's great. Well, Constant, thank you so much for your time.